Listen, when court adjourns for lunch, give me a chance to start off. The casting process for the 1977 TV series Soap was a meticulous task, overseen by the show's creators, Susan Harris and Paul Younger Witt. Each character was carefully crafted, and the right actors were sought to bring them to life. For the role of Jessica Tate, the sophisticated and naive matriarch, the producers chose Catherine Hellman. Hellman's background in theater and her ability to portray both comedy and drama made her an ideal fit. The character of Mary Campbell, a wise cracking maid, was given to the talented comedic actress Catherine Damon. Damon's chemistry with Hellman during auditions solidified her casting. Robert Guillaume, an experienced stage actor, was chosen to play the sarcastic butler, Benson Dubois. Guillaume's portrayal of the character was so well received that it led to his own spin-off series, Benson. The role of Jody Dallas, a gay character, was a groundbreaking move for the time. The producers chose Billy Crystal for the part. Crystal's audition was impressive, and his comedic timing was a perfect match for the character. Richard Mulligan, an Emmy-winning actor, was cast as the womanizing and often drunk father, Burt Campbell. Mulligan's ability to balance humor and drama made him a standout choice. The casting of Soap was a crucial part of its success. The producers were careful to choose actors who could not only act, but also had great chemistry with each other. The result was a memorable ensemble that brought depth and humor to the show. It's always been that way. Jessica, that's not true. You remember Mr. Rollo and what happened to him? Mr. Rollo? The director of the 1977 TV series Soap, Jay Sandrich, had a clear and distinct vision for the show. Known for his work on the Mary Tyler Moore show, Sandrich brought a comedic style that combined subtlety and physical humor. He aimed to create a show that was both funny and thought-provoking, tackling serious issues within the context of a comedic soap opera. Sandrich's creative influences included classic Hollywood comedies and the work of renowned directors like Frank Capra and Billy Wilder. He incorporated their fast-paced, witty dialogue and physical comedy into soap. Sandrich's directing style was characterized by his ability to elicit natural and believable performances from his actors. He achieved this by fostering a collaborative and supportive environment on set. To bring his vision to life, Sandrich worked closely with the cast and crew. He encouraged the actors to improvise and add their own touches to the characters, resulting in memorable performances. Sandrich also collaborated with writers to ensure that the storylines were visually engaging and true to his vision. Sandrich's approach to directing Soap was to create a unique blend of comedy and drama. He aimed to make the show relatable to audiences by tackling serious issues such as infidelity, addiction, and social class, while still maintaining a light-hearted tone. Sandrich's direction helped Soap become a groundbreaking show that resonated with audiences and left a lasting impact on television history. Hey. Ingrid got pregnant and had Corinne. Now Mother wanted the baby, so she very... Soap, the groundbreaking TV series that first aired in 1977, offers a mix of humor, drama, and suspense. The show revolves around the wealthy Tate family and their household staff, with each episode filled with surprising twists and turns. Throughout the series, you'll encounter a variety of memorable characters, from the manipulative Jessica Tate to the lovable but hapless Danny Dallas. Which one is your favorite? Share your thoughts in the comments below. When did you first watch Soap? Whether it was when it originally aired or during a later viewing, the impact of this iconic series has likely stayed with you. Perhaps you recall the shocking moments, such as when character Burt Campbell was revealed to be gay, a bold move for network television at the time. Or maybe you remember the heart-wrenching scene, like when Chester Tate was tragically killed off. No matter what your most cherished memory or personal experience related to soap is, we would love to hear your stories in the comments below. Stay tuned for more funny, shocking, and sad facts about this groundbreaking TV series. It's a meal. We'll, we'll just have a meal together. It's just a meal. Come on, Jody. It's... The production of the 1977 TV series Soap was a significant endeavor involving various aspects such as set design, locations, and logistical challenges. The show's creators aimed to present a satirical take on daytime soap operas requiring a suitable set design to reflect the exaggerated and comedic tone. The set design for Soap was innovative and elaborate, featuring two primary sets, the Tate and Campbell households. 
The Tate residence was designed to resemble a grand, traditional mansion, while the Campbell home was more modern and minimalist. The set designers paid meticulous attention to detail, ensuring that each room was unique and reflected the personality of its inhabitants. In addition to the interior sets, the production also required exterior locations. Scenes set in the Tate family's backyard were filmed on a soundstage, while other exterior shots, such as the characters coming and going, were shot on location in Los Angeles. Balancing the logistics of filming on a soundstage and on location presented several challenges, including coordinating schedules, managing equipment, and ensuring continuity between scenes. One notable technique employed during the production of soap was the use of chroma key technology. This allowed the creators to seamlessly combine live action footage with animated sequences, adding an extra layer of humor and visual interest to the show. Chroma keying, also known as green screen, was a relatively new technique at the time and had not been widely used in television production. Despite the logistical challenges and innovative techniques, the production team of Soap managed to create a visually striking and engaging show that captured the essence of daytime soap operas while adding a comedic twist. The set design, location, and technological innovations all contributed to the series' success and continue to be appreciated by audiences today. Eunice, how would you like some pancakes for breakfast? Oh, no, thank you, Mother. I'm on 300 calories. Season 1 of the TV series Soap introduces the Tates and the Campbells, two families entangled in a web of comedy and drama. The season delves into Jody's prospective sex change, the mysterious death of Peter Campbell, and Danny's troubles with the mob. Despite missing footage in a few episodes, the season, featuring talented actors like Richard Mulligan, Catherine Hellman, Billy Crystal, Robert Mandon, Robert Guillaume, and Arthur Peterson, continues to stand the test of time. Season 2 takes viewers through jailbreaks, death, amnesiacs, love triangles, and increasingly absurd plotlines. While not as great as the first season, it still offers worthwhile viewing, with a 21-minute retrospective as a DVD extra. The show's blend of satire and drama makes it a compelling watch, and a standout in the TV landscape of the late 70s. Then one day, Johnny and Mary Dallas come to me. They ask me to build them a house, and I do. The creation of the musical score and soundtrack for the 1977 TV series Soap was a collaborative effort between composer George Elisis and Tipton and various musicians. Tipton, known for his work on popular TV shows, aimed to complement the narrative and emotional tone of Soap through his compositions. The music in Soap was designed to enhance the show's comedic and dramatic elements, often mirroring the character's emotion and situations. Tipton's score features a variety of styles, from upbeat and playful to somber and reflective, which helped to shape the overall tone of the series. Tipton's approach to scoring soap was to create music that would underscore the humor and satire of the show while also highlighting the more serious moments. He used a mix of orchestral and electronic instruments to achieve the desired sound, which added depth and richness to the series. The soundtrack also includes several popular songs from the 1970s day, which were used to punctuate certain scenes and add to the show's overall atmosphere. These songs were carefully selected to complement the narrative and emotional tone of each episode. In an interview, Tipton stated that he wanted the music in Soap to be an invisible character that would help to tell the story and enhance the viewer's experience. He believed that the music should never overpower the dialogue or actions, but rather support and enhance it. The musicians involved in the creation of the soap score and soundtrack were all highly skilled professionals who brought their own unique talents and perspectives to the project. Together, they helped to create a musical landscape that perfectly captured the spirit of the show. In conclusion, the musical score and soundtrack for soap were essential components of the series, helping to shape its tone and enhance its narrative and emotional impact. Through the collaborative efforts of composer George Elisis and Tipton, and the various musicians involved, the music in Soap remains a memorable and enduring aspect of the show. I waited. Well, now Billy reads, Eunice gets dressed, Corinne eats, and I'm still waiting. In the critically acclaimed TV series, Soap, Billy Crystal played Ted Wass' younger brother, despite being four years older than him. The character Benson, played by Robert Guillaume, did not have his last name revealed until he got his own spin-off series, where it was revealed to be Dubois. The show's third season was particularly successful, 
earning four major Emmy nominations, including for Best Comedy Series, Best Actor for Richard Mulligan, and Best Actress for Catherine Damon and Catherine Hellman. Mulligan and Damon won their categories, but due to a Screen Actors Guild strike, they were not present to accept their awards. Sadly, Damon passed away in 1987, and Mulligan paid tribute to her when he won another Emmy in 1989 for Empty Nest. Hey, Cookie, you forgot something? <laughs> One of the most iconic scenes in the 1977 TV series Soap is the revelation of character Danny's homosexuality. The scene is set in a dimly lit bar, with a nervous Danny sitting at the counter. The camera focuses on Danny's face, capturing his anxiety and fear. The direction, performance, and cinematography come together to create a tense and emotional atmosphere. Billy Crystal's performance is noteworthy as he effectively conveys Danny's internal struggle and fear of rejection. The lighting and camera angles further emphasize Danny's vulnerability, making the scene even more powerful. This scene had a significant impact on audiences as it was one of the first times homosexuality was portrayed on network television in a sensitive and realistic way. The show's creators, Susan Harris and Paul Younger Witt, wanted to tackle important social issues and challenge societal norms. In an interview, Billy Crystal said, That scene was a turning point for me as an actor and for the show. It was a chance to tell a story that mattered and to make a difference in people's lives. Another iconic scene in Soap is the introduction of the character Jody Dallas, one of the first openly gay characters on television. The scene takes place in a brightly lit living room, where Jody, played by Dennis Dugan, is seen dressed in a bright pink dress and high heels. The bold and unapologetic portrayal of Jody's character was groundbreaking for its time and helped to challenge stereotypes and promote acceptance of the LGBTQ community. The direction, performance, and cinematography all contribute to the scene's impact, with the use of bright colors and exaggerated camera angles adding to the campy and over-the-top tone of the show. Dennis Dugan said in an interview, Playing Jody was a privilege and a responsibility. I knew that we were breaking new ground, and I wanted to do it justice. These iconic scenes in Soap continue to resonate with audiences today as they tackle important social issues and challenge societal norms. The show's bold and unapologetic approach to storytelling has left a lasting impact on television and continues to inspire new generations of writers and actors. Why don't we uh, go upstairs? <laughs> no, you can't. The series Soap from 1977 left some storylines unresolved, such as Jessica's potential execution by a communist squad. A 1983 episode of the spin-off Benson revealed that Jessica was in a coma in South America, but other cliffhangers were not addressed. In season two, Randy Heller played the first recurring lesbian character, Alice, on American television. Billy Crystal's early career saw him portraying characters similar to Stefan Girash's in Starsky and Hutch, with his breakout role in Soap starting a year later. Said it. Okay, now slowly lower your arms. The 1977 TV series Soap made a significant cultural and social impact through its innovative soap opera parody format and its groundbreaking inclusion of taboo subjects and diverse characters. Audiences were drawn to its humor, satire, and the unconventional storylines that tackled topics such as homosexuality, infidelity, and political corruption. Soap resonated with viewers as it held a mirror to the absurdity of daytime dramas while addressing real-world issues, making it both entertaining and thought-provoking. The series contributed to pop culture by inspiring a new genre of television comedy and influencing future parody and satire shows. The show also played a crucial role in normalizing and fostering discussions around previously stigmatized subjects such as homosexuality and mental health. By presenting these themes with sensitivity and humor, soap helped to shift societal perceptions and contributed to a more open and inclusive cultural dialogue. In essence, soap served as a catalyst for change in the television industry and society at large, leaving a lasting impact on both the entertainment landscape and cultural attitudes. Ma, what else can I do? Richard Mulligan is known for his recurring role as Dr. Harry Weston in several sitcoms, including Soap and The Golden Girls. 
Interestingly, the character of Father Timothy Flotsky in Soap is in homage to Lenny Bruce's creation in his famous routine Father Flotsky's Triumph. Meanwhile, the show's creator, Susan Harris, produced not one but two sitcoms about sisters in the 80s Soap and Good and Evil. Harris and Mulligan's collaboration resulted in memorable and entertaining television for audiences to enjoy. Morning, I woke up, I felt like Scarlett O'Hara if the Red Butler carried her upstairs. <laughs> that will... The 1977 TV series Soap received considerable critical acclaim and audience appreciation for its innovative soap opera parody format. Key reviews, such as those in the New York Times and Time Magazine, praised the show's humor, satire, and talented cast. Audiences were drawn to the unique blend of comedy and drama, making it one of the top-rated shows during its time. Soap was nominated for several prestigious awards, including 11 Primetime Emmy Awards in its first season, with actress Catherine Damon winning for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series. The show's clever writing and talented ensemble cast also earned it four Golden Globe nominations, including Best Television Series Musical or Comedy. These accolades are significant for those involved in Soap, as they highlight the show's groundbreaking approach to television comedy and its lasting impact on the industry. The awards and nominations validate the hard work and creativity of the show's creators, writers, and actors and serve as a testament to the enduring appeal of the series. The positive reception also contributed to the show's longevity, with Soap running for four successful seasons and spawning a spin-off series, Benson. The critical and popular success of Soap has left an indelible mark on television history, inspiring numerous parodies and influencing the development of contemporary comedy series. The show's ability to tackle serious social issues while maintaining a lighthearted and humorous tone has made it a beloved and enduring classic. Run around in a trench coat getting shot at. I love it. Aww. And Mrs. Baum down the street thought she had a good one when her daughter... In the development of the television series known as Soap, the working title was simply used throughout pre-production and eventually became the official title. The show features various family members, with the Major and Chuck the Ventriloquist being the only ones not followed outside of their homes. Interestingly, a year after the death of Catherine Damon in real life, Richard Mulligan starred in Empty Nest as a recent widower. Husband who doesn't want to make love to me. That's not life, that's something by Tennessee Williams. <laughs> the making of the groundbreaking 1977 TV series, Soap, was filled with humor, camaraderie, and a bit of chaos. Robert Guillaume, who played the sarcastic butler Benson, was known for his professionalism and often kept a straight face amidst the show's outrageous antics. In one episode, he had to deliver a line while holding a live turkey. The turkey defecated on his pristine suit, but Guillaume, ever the professional, didn't miss a beat and continued with the scene. The show's creator, Susan Harris, wanted to create a unique atmosphere on set. She encouraged improvisation, which led to many memorable moments. For instance, during a heated argument scene, Richard Mulligan accidentally hit Catherine Hellman with a prop telephone. Instead of stopping, Hellman used it to further the scene, slapping Mulligan back with the phone. This unexpected moment made it into the final cut and became a memorable moment in the series. The cast was a close-knit group, often spending time together offset. They would have dinner together and even vacationed as a group. This camaraderie translated onto the screen contributing to the show's warm, familial atmosphere. Despite the laughter and fun, the cast and crew worked hard to create the show. They often had to film late into the night, with long hours spent on set. However, they loved the show and were dedicated to making it the best it could be. The result was a revolutionary series that broke boundaries and left a lasting impact on television history. In the 1977 TV series Soap, Danny, played by Billy Crystal, is older than Jody, but in real life, Crystal is three years older than Ted Wass, who portrays Jody. Robert Guillaume made history as the first black performer to win an Emmy for Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series, a feat he achieved twice, both for his role in Soap and its spin-off series, Benson. Guillaume shares this distinction with Jackie Gleason and Ed Asner, who also won Emmys for the same character in different shows. Jay Johnson, who played the ventriloquist Chuck Campbell on Soap, found his role unexpectedly. 
Having recently signed a contract to become a yogurt company spokesman, Johnson stumbled upon an ad seeking a ventriloquist for a sitcom. He auditioned on a whim and landed the role, postponing his yogurt gig. However, halfway through the first season, the yogurt company backed out of the deal, paying off Johnson's contract. It's true. The groundbreaking TV series Soap first aired in 1977, leaving a lasting impact on television history. Its innovative format, a primetime soap opera filled with humor and satire, distinguished it from other shows of the time. Soap fearlessly tackled serious social issues, blending them with comedy, which paved the way for future series to explore taboo subjects. The show's influence can be seen in various realms of television, including the popular primetime soap dynasty, and the critically acclaimed Desperate Housewives. Its unique storytelling approach, filled with unexpected twists and cliffhangers, laid the foundation for modern day series like Lost and This Is Us. Moreover, Soap provided a platform for talented actors, such as Billy Crystal and Robert Guillaume, to showcase their comedic skills and versatility. These actors, along with the show's clever writing, helped break barriers and challenge stereotypes, further diversifying the television landscape. Soap also inspired international remakes, such as the successful British series El Dorado, demonstrating its global appeal and influence. The show's ability to entertain and provoke thought has left an indelible mark on the world of television, inspiring future filmmakers and captivating audiences for generations to come. I mean, Judy has Eric's ring and Tracy has Sam's football. Billy Crystal, initially aiming for the role of a straight man in Three's Company, ended up portraying the first openly gay character on primetime network television, Jody Dallas, in Soap. Jay Johnson gained significant recognition for his role in Soap. Doris Roberts and Catherine Hellman, who played mother-in-laws in Soap, were reunited years later in Everybody Loves Raymond. Their on-screen chemistry clearly transcended the confines of a single series. All right, Benson, I'll have scrambled. Mrs. Tate, think, who would say something? Catherine Hellman holds the distinction of appearing in all 88 episodes of the groundbreaking series. So, this show is notable for featuring one of the first openly gay characters as a regular cast member on American television. Hellman's co-stars, Richard Mulligan and Dinah Manoff, later reunited in another Susan Harris-created sitcom, Empty Nest. Their chemistry and collaboration were undoubtedly a highlight of both series. What? There's an answer. Of course not. Okay, Jessica's Bowers answer. <laughs> Jimmy Bayo transitioned from his role in the Bad News Bears and Breaking Training to playing Billy Tate on Soap. Inga Swenson portrayed the villainous Ingrid Svensson, Corrine's real mother, on Soap. Swenson, like Robert Guillaume, also appeared in the spin-off Benson, but her character shifted from villainous to a comedic presence. Caroline McWilliams also made appearances in both series. Gordon Jump who later became known for his role on WKRP in Cincinnati, appeared as Chief of Police Tinkler on Soap in the season before his WKRP role. He shared screen time with his future WKRP co-star Howard Hesseman in several late first season episodes. Some very weird secrets. <laughs> that wasn't told. I heard their secrets. Soap, along with Charlie's Angels and Three's Company, was one of the most contentious TV shows in the late 1970s due to its sexual content. The show's creator, producer, and principal writer, Susan Harris, even made a brief appearance in the first season as a hooker named Babette. Soap was unique in that it was taped before a live studio audience, which sometimes led to unexpected issues. For instance, during the closing scene of the 25th episode in the first season, when Jessica Tate was convicted of murder, the studio audience began to boo loudly. Instead of reshooting the scene, the production team added a voiceover by Rod Roddy, assuring the audience of Jessica's innocence and hinting that one of the five male characters was the real culprit. This decision softened the intended cliffhanger ending of the first season. Would you tell Benson to starch my shirts, not my shorts? <laughs> Rue McClanahan, known for her role in Maude and future appearances in The Golden Girls, was considered for the part of Mary Campbell on Soap. Before her television success, Catherine Damon had spent over two decades on Broadway and appeared in two television productions. Initially, Chuck Campbell and his ventriloquist Dummy Bob were planned as short-term guest stars who would be responsible for a character's death and then testify in court. However, a positive response to Chuck 
and Bob led to a change in the storyline, allowing them to stay on the show for its entire run. An institution. I'm losing it. I'm, I'm losing it. What, Bert? What are you losing? My marbles. In the early stages of Soap, the show faced challenges with recording sound for Bob, Chuck's ventriloquist dummy. The sound crew was so impressed by Jay Johnson's realistic performance that they often directed the microphone towards the dummy when it spoke. During the same period, Robert Urich made appearances as Peter Campbell while also acting in the sitcom Tabitha as Paul Thurston. This marked a busy time for Urich in the television industry. Meanwhile, Rod Roddy, a former radio DJ and personality, made his first television announcing job on soap. This marked the beginning of his long career in game show announcing, including 17 years on The Price is Right. John Bennett Perry was initially considered for the role of Peter Campbell in the TV series Soap, but the producers ultimately decided to cast Robert Mandon. The character of Mary Campbell, Peter's wife, was played by two different actresses in the show's pilot Salem Jens and Sally Kemp. However, it was Catherine Damon who ultimately secured the role, providing the necessary contrast and personality to her sister, Jessica, portrayed by Catherine Hellman. The show's creator, Susan Harris, had always intended for Soap to run for only five seasons, with all cliffhangers resolved by the end of the fifth season. Even if the series had been renewed for a sixth season, the storylines would have been tied up within that year. The show's unique blend of comedy and drama, along with its serialized format, made it a groundbreaking series in its time. <laughs> the TV series Soap, which first aired in 1977, was known for its comedic take on daytime soap operas. However, its run was not without controversy. Religious groups allegedly pressured sponsors and advertisers to withdraw their support, leading to its abrupt cancellation. However, low ratings were likely the actual cause. In fact, several big-ticket advertisers had boycotted the show from the beginning due to its content. One of the show's stars, Caroline McWilliams, had previously gained recognition for her role as Janet Mason on Guiding Light. Her career breakthrough came when she joined the cast of Soap, playing a different character in the spin-off series Benson. The premiere episode of Soap featured only a few advertisements, including for a new product called Slim Fast. Despite its challenges, the show remains noteworthy for its innovative approach to parodying the soap opera genre. A city in the world where there is no agriculture to speak of, on the roof of a 20-story building. In the pilot episode of the TV series Soap, Casey Kasem served as the narrator, but left soon after due to concerns about the show's mature themes and their potential impact on his family-friendly reputation. Rod Roddy then took over the narration duties, starting from the second episode, and continuing until the series end. I think the whole thing's insane. <laughs> Do I love this? Do I love this? In the groundbreaking soap opera soap from 1977, a shocking event occurred that left a lasting impact on viewers. The show's creator, Susan Harris, made the bold decision to kill off the character of Danny surging Danny Ross, played by Jimmy Bayo, in a tragic car accident. This unexpected turn of events was a first in daytime television and added a level of realism that had not been seen before. The sadness and shock felt by the characters on the show were mirrored by the audience, making for a truly memorable moment in television history. Boy, oh boy, I wish my... If you have fond memories of the 1977 TV series Soap, we'd love to hear them. Share your stories and experiences related to this groundbreaking show. Did it make you laugh or think differently about the world? How did it influence your perspective on television and cinema? We encourage you to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more explorations of classic TV shows and movies. Your engagement helps us continue to create content that you'll enjoy. Let's start a conversation and reminisce about the impact Soap had on us. Whether you were a fan from the beginning or discovered the show later, we want to hear how it affected you personally. Tell us about your favorite characters, episodes, or moments that have stayed with you all these years. Together, we can celebrate this iconic series and the memories it has created for so many of us. So don't be shy, share your thoughts, and join the conversation today. Yeah. Oh, Dave, where were you? I was with Jessica. Hey, Mary. <laughs>